Okay, in case you didn't realise, I'm Greek. <laughs> so I am very drawn to anything that happens in Greece, the whole deal. And I love the fact that today we're going to be talking about godly ambition. And I love the fact that at Better Together and in the 21st century, we're living in a time where we don't have to spend the whole program trying to tell girls it's okay, you can have ambition, you know, mm. you can desire something more for your life. I think we've been telling women that for um, a really long time, that we're actually starting to believe it and that the higher conversation mm -hmm. is going to need to be had, okay, right. what's godly ambition and what's selfish ambition, whether it's for men or for women, because mm -hmm. the right. fact is that, uh, right. you know, all of us, no matter what our gender is, is we ought to be pursuing godly ambition. And so let's just start at the beginning where you go, okay, are there chicks in the Bible that actually did? Well, of course, the first European convert was a woman yeah. and <laughs> it happened. She was baptised in Philippi. You're saying, why are you excited, Chris? because our A21 headquarters is in Thessaloniki, Greece, 45 minutes drive mm. up the road is Philippi, and this is where Lydia was water baptised. And you could tell mm -hmm. I'm Pentecostal or my Baptist friends watching this, you go, what other kind of baptism is there? But anyway, so us Pentecostals <laughs> like to confirm water baptised. And so it was like the first conversion, the first water baptism that happened. And it was a chick and not just any kind of chick. Okay, let me just say, this is going to blow your mind. The Bible says right. in the book of Acts chapter 16, Luke writes, so setting sail from Troas, we made direct voyage to Somathres and the following day, to Neapolis and from there to Philippi, which is the leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city some days. And on the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate to the riverside where we, where we supposed there was a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the women who had come together. So again, I want to show you, um, it's not only Jesus in the Gospels that spoke to women. Here we are now, we're in Philippi, they're sitting down talking to the chicks and it says, um, one who heard us was a woman named Lydia from the city of Theatira, a seller of purple goods. I mean, we've got a businesswoman for shout out to yeah. all the business chicks out mm -hmm. here. So she was a seller right. of purple goods who was a worshiper of God. <gasps> Christine, you mean you could be in business and worship God? Oh yeah, this is going to blow your mind right now, right here. So it says, and she was also a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what was said by God. Paul. So girls, just another shout out. Don't throw away everything Paul said because even the Lord opened up her heart to hear right. everything that was said by Paul. And after she was baptised and her household as well. This is what I love about chicks because once we get saved, everyone's getting saved with us. That's just the way that it is, whether you want to <laughs> or not. Right. She right. urged us saying, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. And she prevailed upon us. Okay. So here is a woman. Obviously, she's a woman that knows what she's about. She's got a business. Um, she's selling her goods, right. purple goods, so fine linen. Uh, you could go to Proverbs 31 as well and see in the Old Testament, there's a precedent for this mm -hmm. kind of chick, um, a yeah. woman that is fantastic, mm -hmm. that is obviously got it together. She's a businesswoman and she runs a family mm -hmm. and she manages a household and she's got a whole lot of stuff going on. Mm -hmm. And so some of you are wondering, you know, is God okay with that kind of woman? And, and I'm saying, yes. I'm, I'm now 55 this year. Can I say when I started in ministry in my early 20s, um, it, my particular sector of the church was very open to women maximising their gifts. But as I started to travel, I realised that this is not everyone's story. A lot of people like, right. oh my gosh, if you're a follower of Jesus, Jesus must want to quench your gifts. He must want to quench your talents and he wants to minimise you. And, um, you know, I come from a Greek Orthodox home. So in my Greek culture, a woman was only, only encouraged to wash, iron, cook, clean, become a good wife, look after a husband. That was a cultural thing. That's not a Jesus thing. That was a, a cultural thing. And I had adapted a lot of that. So I had to renew my mind uh, when I got saved and I felt the call of God and I didn't know what that meant. You go, what's the call of God? I felt called to Jesus mm -hmm. to do whatever mm -hmm. Jesus wanted me to do. That's what I still feel at 55. Mm -hmm. I'm called to Jesus to keep saying yes to Jesus. I didn't know I would be doing A21 at 21 when I was saved at 21 years old because I did not even know human trafficking existed. Some of you who are posting mm -hmm. at 22 years old, the thing God's called you to do and what it is and how it's, I'm like, how do you even know what it's gonna be? <laughs> I didn't even know trafficking existed when I was 21. I didn't even know that I would be yeah. doing what I'm doing with women. But I, my godly ambition was, oh, 
I want the gospel to go to the uttermost parts of the That's earth. Right. I don't care what part I play. I mean, anyone that knew That's me back then, they would tell you this to be true. I will do whatever I have to do to play a part in God's grand story of making mm. the name of Jesus Christ famous mm. on the earth, of going into Amen. all the world and making right. disciples. Amen. I just took very seriously right. uh, the fact that I believed we were called for the evangelization of planet Earth before Amen. the second coming of Jesus Christ. That's what I think yeah. everyone's job is if you're yeah, a Christian. Right. Yeah. But you could be a Christian yeah. businesswoman, that's your job. A Christian, a female, and right. you're a teacher. You're a doctor, you're a lawyer, you're a stay-at-home mother homeschooling 10 kids. Yeah. All the other stuff, when I say secondary, it's important because it's how God made you, but it's for the higher purpose yeah of going into all the world and making yeah, disciples right. of all nations. And so that is godly ambition. But you know, um, the word ambition I know is in scripture, uh, it's seven times and mostly it's in the context of do nothing out of selfish ambition, right. uh, Paul writes. Um, right. You know, Jesus did not consider, uh, he didn't do anything out of selfish ambition. He made himself, he lowered himself and made himself humble to fulfill um, the Father's purpose. But Paul, right. three times, he uses the word ambition um, in the, he says, I have made it my ambition. And that was to take, make, right. take the gospel out further. I've made it my ambition not to preach in another man's field, but to preach in my, I have made it my ambition. To, so ambition's not a bad thing. Three times he talks right. about what godly ambition is. And of course, godly ambition is to fulfill the purpose of God in our generation, in our right. sphere of right. influence. That's godly ambition. Yes. Now we don't live in a world that's full of godly ambition. We are living in a world that is gonna press every button for every one of us, me and you, included to pursue selfish ambition. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything in right. this, our world is yeah. self. We need you to be self-actualized. We need you to be self-realized. We need you to be self-determined. We, we need you mm -hmm. to live your best life. You do you, boo. It's all yeah. about becoming the best version of you, whatever the heck. The best version of me needed to be killed and I needed to be saved Amen. and delivered and healed. That's all I'm trying to say. I needed, right. I needed right. to be right. dead to yeah. self and alive right. to Christ yes. in that sense. Um, yes. So Amen. I think in a culture that celebrates selfish ambition, We've got to be really be careful as Christian women. Lydia, uh, and the whole point coming full circle back to Lydia, is she was a businesswoman. Mm -hmm. She heard the gospel, got saved, got baptised, and the first thing she did was begin to give of her resources to say, okay, come to my house. Right. Let's work this thing out. What am I going to do? What's my part in advancing the cause of the gospel mm -hmm. uh, through right. the gifts that God's given right. me, through the talents God's given me, through the resources God's given me, whatever sphere of life that is, Lydia had godly ambition, so she she it didn't diminish what she was right. doing before. It gave that greater purpose, mm -hmm. and in fact, she probably right. uh, excelled even more because now there was a greater purpose right, for her right. resource and a greater that's purpose right. for a gift and a talents. And right. that's what I want to encourage women to do. Never from me, am I ever going to try to put guilt, shame, or condemnation? Say, you know, oh, you've you've got to just like minimize yourself, shrink yourself. I actually want you to fully flourish in life. We all do it better together, but to know what that is for, and it's for the purpose of the cause of right. the King and his right. kingdom. I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe today and you'll never miss a new upload. And don't forget to check out our Better Together shop. Thanks for being a part of our community.